Hey everyone, welcome to the first part of our Power Grid Power User Tutorial Series. This is the first video in our Power Grid Power User Series where we walk you guys through creating functions that go beyond the main editor. This guide is for experienced Power Grid users and we'll assume that you are familiar with making grids in the Power Grid editor. If you're not, you can click on this video which will get you started. Today we're going to start off with a simple tutorial to get you accustomed to the file directories of Power Grid and where graphic assets are stored. We'll also be showing you how to make a grid in the much asked for landscape mode. Landscape mode isn't an embedded feature. This is because making graphics vertically would make more sense rather than to limit people's creativity by forcing them to make both portrait and landscape versions of their grid. So the work around this is simple. Just flip your phone and your grid on its side. Make sure that you plan your grid before you get started. We also have a sheet you can print out so you can sketch out what you're trying to achieve. We've provided some PSD graphic templates. In these templates, the cells are laid out to the correct dimensions so that way you can create your own graphics without having to worry about them not matching the size of the grid. There's a link to download the Power Grid template pack in the description. The ideal resolution for the graphics in each cell is 270 by 270 pixels for high definition or Android devices and 135 by 135 pixels for iOS and for universal support. This is a grid we've made for Crypt of the Necro Dancer that uses landscape mode. For the Crypt of the Necro Dancer grid, I found it a lot easier to work on the graphics in landscape like this. For landscape grids, I find it easier to work with the landscape template and then flip it 90 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise. That way when I export the buttons, they'll be facing the right way when I import them into the grid. Once I've got the style done for each button's active state and inactive state, I create two flattened layers, one with all the buttons off and one with all the buttons on. Then all I have to do is select the correct cell for each button, copy the graphics, paste it into a new file, and then save it as a PNG always remembering to have an on state and an off state for each button. Using this method, it's also recommended that you also create graphics for the inactive parts of the grid. Once I have all my buttons, I can easily import them into the editor. Once you've imported your graphics, they're gonna show up here. However, this Crypt of the Necro Dancer grid requires a bit more TLC. This is because it has some awesome added functions where we can use it to light up our rocket TalkFX products. All the plugin graphics are stored in their own separate folder and you can't use the editor to import them. This has to be manually done inside the JSON files. So who's JSON and why do you need to care about him? Well, don't worry, we're gonna be looking at that next time. We've already seen some fantastic examples of landscape grids, especially from the Elite Dangerous community and the Star Citizen community not to mention a bunch of other grids from simulator enthusiasts and from other games as well. Also remember that any grid that you download from the store that is not a plugin can be edited by you as well. So don't be shy to put your own spin on some of these fantastic grids. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.